Did you know about the obscure but growing market on Uber? Now, I'm sure you're familiar with rideshare and delivery services. However, Uber's been expanding into Uber crime. Yes, Uber crime. Don't worry though, there is a crime category for every driver and you may qualify for more than one. Today, we're gonna explore the sex <laughs> trafficking category on Uber crime. In lieu of higher pay, you'll experience guilt from contributing to the moral decline in society, and you may even get the chance to spend some time in prison, or at least be sued for all you have. Talk about being able to take a break from being on the app all those long hours with low pay. Even if you avoid prison, you'll be responsible for your fellow human beings being murdered, raped, abducted, drugged, assaulted, and intoxicated. At the very least, you're gonna be responsible for traumatizing people, most likely for the rest of their lives. Now, can you opt out of Uber crime? Absolutely. Hello and welcome. My name is Russ and I'm a gig work expert. I love using my expertise part-time since late 2018 to help you remain safe and make more money. I also feel compelled to warn you of terrible things that are going on in our industry, like today's topic. What's all this talk about sex trafficking? I just give rides. Just so you know, Uber and Lyft have both received scrutiny last year from United States senators. Senators asked, what steps does Uber take to combat the use of ride hailing service for human trafficking? Also directed towards drivers. The senators asked, is there a standardized reporting protocol for drivers who believe that a passenger may be trafficked? They then asked 10 more detailed questions. The link to these letters are in the video description, so check that out later. On October 25th, 2022, the FBI notified the public and rideshare companies that criminal actors leverage rideshare vehicles to abduct minors. Of note, the privacy of rideshare services allowed criminal actors to hide potential witness identification and afforded them direct transportation. Further, while using rideshare vehicles, threat actors were less likely to be apprehended when compared to other modes of transportation or facilities. The link again is in the video description. Now, isn't it interesting that Uber started up the Uber Teen program despite being warned of the many dangers that children face? More on Uber and Lyft shortly. This is for parents. There are so many easy and scary ways that your child could become a sex trafficking victim. Many are exceedingly obvious, yet they're happening today. Parents, where are your children? Why would you take a chance of relying on a stranger for your child's safety? What if, despite your best efforts educating your child, he or she actively tries to deceive you in order to unwittingly become a sex trafficking victim? I can only imagine how terrible you would feel if your child purposely stops using those techniques that you have in place for their safety, bypasses them, and then something terrible happens. In recent sex trafficking crimes, the criminal returns the child to the parent. Now, what if your child was abducted and you never see him or her again? Everyone should watch the movie Sound of Freedom, and this will give you background on how serious the sex trafficking industry is, especially for children. Although this movie takes place in another country, how easy would it be to take place where you live? Now, if you're getting value from this, would you please click the like button and like the channel as well. Thank you for helping YouTube get this video out to everybody. I would also like to thank Junior for sending me valuable information to help raise awareness of this vital topic. I'll link his channel in the video description as well. Now drivers, many of you are parents too, and I can only trust that you accept your responsibility once a minor is in your custody, no matter how that happened. Let's get into the types of things that drivers can do right now to ensure children's safety in the context of Uber crime. The biggest thing you can do is not take any form of unaccompanied minor ride, including Uber Teen. Be aware that someone can easily set up a ride for an adult and you are gonna be the first to recognize something is not right when a child shows up to take the ride. This is the most critical time to take action and prevent disaster. If you do take an unaccompanied minor ride, then ask questions to make sure the child is not in trouble or being pressured to travel. If there's anything that seems wrong, ask the child to call a parent so you could talk to him or her. 
This doesn't make everything else okay, but at least you're doing your part to ensure the child's safety. Now, once the minor's in your car and you have indications that something is wrong, then call 911 and comply with emergency services instructions. Calling 911 should be your priority and calling Uber or Lyft should be the last thing you do, as you're gonna find out shortly. Another great idea for any type of trip or order is to take screenshots of all information. In the case of sex trafficking, at least you're gonna have some information you can share with the authorities. Don't assume that the customer is actually a parent or someone with permission from the parent to take custody of the child upon arrival. You could actually be chatting with, calling, or meeting the sex trafficker. When you drop off the child, consider making sure there's a smooth handoff to an adult as much as possible. If you feel something isn't right, then call 911. Whatever you do, and no matter what happens, know that you are responsible for your actions, especially while the child's in your custody. Think of the justice that a parent would demand from any and everyone who took part in anything to do with sex trafficking of their child. Playing dumb isn't going to help you at trial. Saying that you were just doing your job isn't going to make you feel better about what a criminal did to the child. Claiming that you were following the instructions of the app does not shift blame to any company. Speaking of blaming the company, the company is going to blame you and abandon you in an instant. Let's get into the bizarre world of Uber and Lyft. Uber has most of the attention because of Uber Teen, but both platforms are guilty of allowing and enabling minors on their platforms. Uber and Lyft are only out for the money. They do not care about drivers. In fact, drivers are expendable. Uber and Lyft only care about the money that the riders are paying. Since Uber and Lyft bear liability for everything that happens on their platforms, they excel at distancing themselves from reality. They bill themselves as technology companies to avoid responsibility. If they acknowledge that there's a problem, then they must fix it. This is why Uber and Lyft deny and deflect any and all responsibility. Read their words closely. They pretend to care, but only cite their commitment to safety and share inconsequential things that are on the app to give riders a feeling of safety. It's a sham. All they want is the rider's money. What about the claim that drivers undergo regular background checks to ensure Uber and Lyft services are safe? That sounds fine, right? Do you realize that there are different levels of background checks and the thorough ones cost a lot of money? Do you really think that Uber and Lyft are going to spend the money to do a thorough background check? A company called Hop Skip Drive fingerprints their drivers because that service is designed for children to use. I'll link their driver training in the video description and you're going to instantly see the difference. What type of unaccompanied minor training does Uber and Lyft provide? Is it even close to what Hop Skip Drive provides? United States Senators sent a letter to Uber and Lyft on June 12, 2023 with a deadline of two weeks to respond. The Senators asked 12 detailed questions on all aspects of what the company is doing regarding to sex trafficking. I can't find their response online. Since these letters, there have been more sex trafficking incidents, most recently in July on Uber. Uber's response was tepid and placating, but it proves they continue to do nothing about allowing and enabling sex trafficking on their platform. How many children have to suffer for Uber's gross negligence? Here's a solution. Just like virtually every rideshare issue, Uber and Lyft have always had the ability to voluntarily choose to do the right thing. Uber and Lyft need to take action now of their own free will. Otherwise, we need a federal law to make them care. Why do they resist and compel lawmakers to make laws to force their compliance? We need a federal law about unaccompanied minors, and it also needs to cover rideshare platforms such as Uber and Lyft. Look at the federal law concerning service animals. We know service animals are protected by the Americans with Disabilities Act. And if a driver declines a service animal request, they will be permanently banned from the rideshares platform. Uber did a campaign for service animals to all drivers before they could even get on the app to accept rides. Why? Because it was a federal law. 
Why can't they do another mass campaign to all drivers to attest to stop picking up unaccompanied minors? The answer is simple. There are no laws, so they get away with it. Now, parents, drivers, and responsible corporations, and that includes you, Uber and Lyft, you have the knowledge to stop sex trafficking on rideshare platforms. Opt out of Uber crime right now. We've focused on protecting unaccompanied minors, but that doesn't make things okay for drivers. Drivers are at risk of severe consequences when giving rides to unaccompanied minors. Learn more about that here.